I need to, I think I need to drink a glass of water after reading all these names. You know, uh, it's a good uh, tongue twister games, right? <laughs> and every Advent, we hear the genealogy of Jesus. Okay. First of all, it's long. <laughs> and a lot of the names we're unfamiliar with. Because of that, sometimes yeah. we think, what's the point? What's the point to listen to the genealogy of Jesus? And there's a tendency to just tune out. Just tune out, okay? But there's a reason why Matthew put the genealogy uh, in the gospel, okay? And uh, first of all, you know, he, he really wants to make sure that there's a line between Abraham and Jesus, because Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Abraham, that you will have a descendant that will be an everlasting king, that will have an eternal kingdom, and that's Jesus. Also, Matthew wants to show the connection between Jesus and David. Okay? Jesus comes from the line of King David. And, and we see here that uh, there's, there's 14 generations uh, from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the deportation to Babylon, and then 14 generations from the deportation to Jesus. And if you see the alphabet of the name of uh, David, if you, add it up, if you add it all up, it's the number 14. But Jesus is not just the descendant of David. Here, we're talking about three 14s. Jesus is the thrice Davidic son of David. It's so beautiful. And also here in the genealogy, if you notice, Matthew included four women. Four women. Then the first one was Tamar. Tamar had a twin with, his, with, with her father-in-law, Judah. So that's incest, right? And we see here also of, of Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute in Jericho. Ruth was a foreign Moabite woman. And the wife of Uriah, which is Bathsheba, whom King David had committed adultery and later on murdered the husband of Bathsheba. Well, it's unusual to include women in the genealogy, but more so it's scandalous to include these four women in the genealogy. And we could see here the messiness of human sin in the line of, of Jesus. But God is all-powerful. If God could create something out of nothing, He could easily write straight with crooked lines. You know, he's the Lord of the history, okay? And we see here how God's love is more powerful than our failures. And we see out of that messiness came forth Jesus, okay? So what's the point of this reading? How does this reading apply in our life? You know, just like Jesus, you know, he could easily just come from nowhere. But God designed that he was be born out of a woman, Mary. God designed that he would be born in a family, a family with history. And that's also with us. God designed that all of us would be born in a family with its history. And we, if we look at our history, there's messiness there, the messiness of sin when we could see the intergenerational sin that was passed on to us from generation to generation. But God could easily redeem us. That intergenerational sin could stop with us as we repent and as, as we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And as we look back to that intergenerational sin and also our sin, our failures, God could redeem all of that. We could even use that as our testimony of how the Lord has redeemed us. And when, we, when we, we say no to sin and say yes to God, we bring forth Jesus. 
in our lives, in our family, and in this world. That's why when we read this genealogy of Jesus, we should see our story in this. So let's examine our lives during this Advent. How our family, how our ancestors have failed, and yet how the Lord could redeem that.